Today I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the technologies that we have available to ask um, those questions and probe for answers. One of the technologies that we use here at Johns Hopkins Medicine is, is a technology called positron emission tomography, or PET scans. You might know of PET scans uh, because they are used oftentimes um, in imaging tumors in cancer patients. What we do here is we tweak the technology so that um, compounds that go and light up proteins are not going and lighting up cancer cells. They're going into the brain and lighting up proteins that we think might be involved in some of these mental diseases. So uh, here you see our compound. We are going to tweak it so that, that it goes and lights up a protein that we think might be involved in schizophrenia. We have one of our patients um, participate by lying on the PET scanner. And we inject this radio tracer and it goes and lights up that protein that we think might be involved. And what um, the outcome is, is that we, we see uh, an image with um, bright colors lighting up across the brain where that protein is found. So we can image living patients and see whether these proteins are expressed differently in the patients compared to healthy volunteers who also undergo the exact same scans. A particular protein that um, we've been focusing on recently is a protein that is greatly increased in the brain when um, people have uh, inflammatory processes or injury to the brain. We're wondering whether there's inflammation that's related to onset of schizophrenia um, based on the fact that there's lots of research that suggests that might be true. So we've been imaging this particular protein, it's called translocator protein, in the brains of schizophrenia to see whether there is a different immune reaction in the brains of patients with schizophrenia compared to people without it. And what you see here is that um, one healthy control participant uh, had, had the same brain scan as the patient with schizophrenia. And um, although the healthy control participant has uh, a baseline low level of this particular immune protein all across his brain, that's what a normal brain should look like. The patient with schizophrenia actually has a much darker uh, green hue to his PET signal. And that means there's less of this immune protein. We don't really know exactly what that means, but it's interesting to know that the immune protein related to immune response um, in normal individuals is changed in the brains of patients with schizophrenia. And we've gone a step further to scan many patients with schizophrenia and ma many healthy controls, and we've seen this trend across the board. So now we're looking at whether um, Proteins in the periphery and in the um, fluid that bathes the brain are also showing changes in immune proteins. And that would help us um, inform future imaging studies, building on what we've learned from these pictures. Ultimately, the goal is to develop uh, new treatments uh, for patients. And I think the starting point is really going to be knowing which proteins and which pathways at a molecular level are involved over the course of schizophrenia. And really these technologies, imaging proteins that are involved in the brains of living patients is ultimately the way that we're going to get those answers.